So the film is following the journey of Laura, who I play, um, and she is grieving. All of her past troubles are coming back to light. In the film, she's losing her mind almost, but not. She grew up in a manor house with her mum and dad, and she had a terrible time because her mother was suffering with something called Morvan's syndrome, which is actually a very rare illness. Visionary and auditory hallucinations, night sweats, insomnia, angry outbursts. Well, now we've got a diagnosis. There's hope. We might get your mother back. I can't tell what's the illness and what's my mum anymore. And that was really difficult for her. Her father had abandoned her, so she left her manor home and moved to London, and she comes back to where her mother has committed suicide. It explores um, something that happens quite often to people. Personally, I haven't experienced it myself, but she's suffering from sleep paralysis, and, um, and lots of my friends have suffered that and it can be quite threatening and there can be a demonic thing in the room or, you know, there's a scientific explanation as well, so it's the struggle with figuring out what it is that's happening. My character, Jake, is a um, 30-something uh, lawyer, very successful, um, just become a partner on the firm, has never lost a case. Very confident, um, you know, well-dressed, smart guy, loves his girlfriend, is devoted to Laura. She inherits this beautiful old house, this old hotel that uh, her mother and father have owned together and uh, has passed away. So she inherits this, this huge responsibility in some ways and kind of wants to give it a go. So she takes it over and moves in with her boyfriend, Jake, who I play, uh, and, and sort of try to support her. Uh, in this venture. Um, I'm a lawyer, but all's not well. Uh, she, we quickly deduce that there's some strange things going on um, and uh, things that go bump in the night. My character is called Mary. She suffers from Morvan's syndrome. That's quite a rare syndrome. I think uh, maybe between 15 and 20 people have it in the world. So the film will be putting a little light onto that illness. She's got agoraphobia. She's got claustrophobia. She is really um, quite ill. I need you here. Oh, and I really need a break. That's it. Leave just like your father! And, uh, quite mentally ill as well, which is something that can be quite difficult to portray in film, because when you're ill in your head, you obviously, as a human being, try not to show people, but on film, you have to have a little bit of a license to um, get people that don't know you, whether you're ill or not, to, to show them. So I found that quite challenging. Now we have a diagnosis, we know what we're dealing with. Uh, the character I play in the film is, at the moment, called Ian, though I suspect that may change at, at some point. Uh, it was nice for the writer to give, give them the same name. I think it was just to encourage me to play the part, and obviously it's worked. But I play the father to the main protagonist, Laura. Uh, I sort of lead you into the, in, into the film. I set the scene. We find out through the father the, how the, the state of the family, uh, the condition that my wife is in. You need to be patient with her, Laura. She can't see the light through the trees. And from there, we're led in and all the repercussions of what goes on. Scene 29, take 61, take three. Action! In the name of Jesus Christ, and he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons. Oh, well, my character is very mysterious because um, uh, the film is called Spiritualist, and you're looking at the spiritualist. So, of course, a lot of the film is waiting to see what will happen when I appear. So, I don't want to give too much of the plot away, but I'm actually called in to help, obviously, with a situation that involves possible, possible possession, possible ghosts, whatever. Um, so there's a dire situation going on, and the expert has to sort it all out.
my character is called Petra, which is awesome, a real name. <laughs> and um, she works in the prison as a counsellor. She has a best friend called Laura, who is going out with Jake. But Petra really likes Jake. Um, she wishes she was in Laura's place. That kind of creates tension because um, Jake and Petra should be together. <laughs> But uh, Petra wants to be a loyal friend to Laura. But for me, it's also a little bit of an entertainment. As much as I believe in the spiritualist powers, I also want to be the one who brings the spiritualist to the house and brings the people together, a bit like a dinner party with, a, with an edge. My character, Daniel, plays uh, the part of her boyfriend's uh, business partner. So we come for the weekend um, in this big house. Yeah. And uh, again, yeah, and things unfold from that. Can I talk now and say... You talk, so, go. You, yeah, so, so <laughs> basically what he said, and I'm... We're, we've come away to the house together. Um, I said that. He said that. Um, but I just want to get away, basically, um, and spend time with, um, with Lee, Daniel, and just have a nice weekend together, away. <laughs> Don't we? <laughs> Isn't that true, though? True. And this, obviously, the seance takes place in the in the house, which I absolutely love because I love I love mm -hmm. all that sort of stuff. Oh, God, I hate that stuff. You've got to be angry at Jake for that. Actually, it's like, no, Jake, come on, I can do this. You want to run away because you know you've got to kind of get him removed because you know the consequences. If you don't do that, he's going to like headbutt him or something. So the idea of the spiritualist, as you know, was born from a conversation I had with Taz, the producer. We came together, we wanted to make a film, both love horror films. And I remember the great films like, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street, The Shining. And I just remember the movement um, from Friday the 13th, you know, I was really into slasher films and then the parody of Scream later on. And just the journey of horror, I, I feel like everything I've soaked up like a sponge and put it into this film. I love it when a house is a central character and when myself and Taz came to discover this house, Manor by the Lake, we thought absolutely perfect setting, an isolated setting to home, you know, give home to this horror film. So whilst coming in here, spending a few days writing the film, it kind of wrote itself. I was, I was inspired by the rooms. I use a lot of reflections. The film is about reflection. It's about the past. So mirrors really feature heavily in this film. And it's really symbolic that actually Laura having to confront the demons of her past. And, you know, you, you might be living in this house, but you, somebody else could be living here that you don't know about. Living with somebody, uh, my partner, who's just recently, um, just a couple of months ago, been diagnosed with more vans. But all the signs were there over the years. But at the moment, there's only two people actually living, this, living with this diagnosis on record. There have been 15 in English literature, but currently there's only two. It's an autoimmune deficiency disease. And um, the, the symptoms, whilst living with my partner, seeing what he's going through and seeing the symptoms manifest, and myself, um, something that used to suffer from night terrors, seeing what he's going through, who's having night terrors, hallucinations, and me with my spiritual beliefs, they were united, it was a fit, and so I just clocked something. I thought, you know, we can take leverage out of this. There's so many, you know, there's so much, there's so many similarities between the two states. And I was writing the film, I didn't go in as a starting point, but it certainly became a very strong backstory and components to make the story, to drive it forward. Carl, who I met at a screening of mine, um, is a director, and uh, he's also a horror lover and a thriller lover. Um, and I think I just found it very exciting to meet somebody else who has the same passion as, as I did. And I literally said to him, let's get together and make a film. And we sat down at the Curzon on Shaftesbury Avenue one day over coffee and came up with like a basic idea just for fun, just to see if we can work with each other. And then this little idea just expanded into this massive idea. And then Carl went away and just wrote a whole feature film script, which blew me away, basically. And then when I saw the script, I said to him, let's just make this, let's just do it. Um, and that's kind of how this all came about. Show us. Show us where you are. Just, just, just show us. 
it's been wonderful working with Carl. Um, very different experience to anything I've ever had before in my career, but Carl, um, it's been a really organic kind of development of scenes and he's really open to listening to everybody's ideas and whatever you want to bring to the scenes or to your character. He's really open for listening to them and seeing how things develop organically um, and doing lots of character development work, which has been really exciting and really refreshing as an actress rather than feeling like rather than feeling like a puppet, as you can sometimes feel as an actress. It's been nice to have a lot of creative input. Carl's been very generous and uh, he's very clear about what he wants, but he allows us to discover things for ourselves and find the truth in something, which is, which is invaluable. He would workshop us right before we did the scene, sometimes, and um, allow us to improvise through it. And then he would come in and craft out of that improvisation the truth of what worked within that. He's very easygoing. He knows what he wants um, from a scene and he really, really gets it. And if he's not happy, he will get us to go again, obviously. And he will let us have our own um, say and what we think would be good also. And he takes that into consideration. Um, but he's, he's, he's very, very relaxed, which I really, I really love. I only knew um, Jasmine's work from EastEnders. I found her quite outstanding in EastEnders, so I was delighted at the chance to work with her. Never met Ian Reddington before, but his, his presence goes before him. Um, and we get on really well, um, get on well with Jasmine. I would say it's a, a, a largely not famous cast. I think they will be after this. And it makes it more interesting because I don't have preconceived ideas about any of them. And so we've gone into the, the shooting just with the characters. So that's been really interesting. Julie T. Wallace is, is part of my history uh, in the job that I do because she was that's huge when I was, when I was younger. And uh, her, she was in a fantastic series called um, Diary of a She-Devil. Uh, so she's ingrained in my in my mind and when I'm and I didn't know her and when I met her for the first time It was as if I'd known her all my life Which is what tends to happen when you when you meet people that have been exposed to that extent on uh, on TV so it was marvelous meeting with her and I've probably now got a new a new a new friend in Julie, and I hope so I did work with her I worked with her when we were both about 19 which is at least 15 years ago. <laughs> many, many decades since I've seen Julie. So that's been lovely. That's been really nice. Um, no, the cast have been great. Um, I don't know if you're going to ask me about what it's like working with the director, but oh my goodness. Well, it's my third film for Carl. And this to me has just been the most fantastic experience because um, he's filming it in a very not necessarily handheld, but a very long takes, Robert Altman type, you know, European style, you know, just keep the camera rolling, which is, which is like playing theatre, and theatre is where I love to perform. So it's been fantastic. You just, just, you know, do the scene and then do it again, rather than, you know, the usual close up, cut, stop, do that again, don't move your arm, which I'm not very good at doing, as you can see. So, um, no, that's been, it's been fantastic. Really enjoying myself. I had an email uh, on a Wednesday evening from the producer, um, Mumtaz Yilda Rimlar, uh, who's also a really good friend of mine, great producer, good director in his own right. Someone dropped out of, of the film, couldn't, couldn't, couldn't make it for whatever reason, and I just got sent the script, obviously said, yes, I'm interested, read the script, loved it. I went to meet the director the next day and the producer, and um, luckily they, they offered me the role, so it kind of came to me by a complete chance um, and, and hopefully was meant to be, so, yeah. Carl is a very generous director and very, very patient and lovely to work with. He also wrote The Spiritualist, so he knew the vision you know, from start to finish. Um, and Carl also works with Mumtaz, who is the producer on this. So they make a really, really good team, very vibrant and um, 
they get on really well, which creates lovely atmosphere on the film set and all the ideas come together really smoothly. I met Mumtaz, the producer, at a Central London screening premiere of Crosslands, which he wrote, directed and produced. And I know how difficult that can be to wear those three hats as a producer, writer, director. So when I met him, after watching his film, I was really inspired. I saw somebody with passion that just went out and made this film happen. And that's not easy, um, you know, to source funding, get great talent, you know, get the location sorted. And I thought, this is good to see somebody with so much passion and energy, not just for film, but horror film. So let's actually bring our forces and contacts together and throw it out there and write a project. And we um, came up with an idea for a story. Um, then I went off and developed and wrote the story and Taz completely produced the film. So when we were looking at casting, we are going to the agencies, we wanted recognisable faces. And that was great, and we'd, we'd done some auditions, and I wanted somebody that the lead character of Laura had to be somebody that was sensitive, um, very likeable, because, um, you know, she's dealing with loss and bereaving, and I wanted the lead, the heroine of the film, to be crucial to, I know, she had to have a likeability about her, and people had a feel for what she's going through. So the casting of Jasmine Banks, when, as soon as we met her, we thought, she's superb, you know, she'll hold this film. And obviously, we've got Julie T. Wallace as the mother, when I watched The She Devil years ago in Fifth Element in the James Bond film, seeing her, just she's just a force, she's an enigma. So working with her, the dynamics between Jasmine and her mother, uh, that, you know, it was just great casting. I just love them on their on screen chemistry. The same with Ian Reddington, bring him as the father. And um, every character has like something you like about them, but they all have a fear that we're trying to explore as well. So the, the, the whole film carries through on like an obscure level. So you, you don't quite understand any character and all the complexities till you get to the resolve at the end. And that's really important. We, it's really important when writing this film that you watch a whole scene and you really can't make sense of what you've just seen. You're left in a moment, the viewer's left with an active imagination, they're not spoon fed. And that was really crucial for this film. And sometimes it's not till you get to the end of the scene or two scenes later that that previous scene then lands and makes sense for the viewer. And I think that's the kind of films that I watch. I'm really inspired by films that challenge my thinking. I think um, just working with the team involved, um, you know, it's an independent film and just the way everyone's engaging with the project and working with each other, everyone's kind of snapping out of their original roles a little bit and helping each other out with all sorts. And I think that kind of energy and passion ignites my hunger to just continue doing things like this you know it's a big team effort um and you know having some recognizable cast in the films also motivated me um because it's my first film where i have had some recognizable uh cast involved so that was again a good that was very good for me as well um and also i believe some of the cast within the film were looking to do a feature film as well so it was very good because we helped each other out which is i think a very important thing i mean i've always wanted to do a film just set in one amazing location um you know, because it's like a character within itself. To have to have the film just disjointed in, you know, filming in all sorts of areas can sometimes maybe kill the film, but it's just nice to have it set in the same place. You know, all the actors are here, the accommodation's here. It makes things run more smoothly and just a bit more easier. And it just, I think everyone enjoys the process a lot more. Um, and it just it brings everyone together because we're all under the same roof. And I think as a team for something like this, it's important we're all, that we're all together. So on, on some other projects, people don't even get a chance to meet. And I think in this project, everyone's together like one big family. And I think that was one of the biggest excitements for me. Do I like horror films? Um, not really. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I have to not watch them because I'm, I'm scared. I get scared really easy. So. So I, I enjoy them, but it's like a love-hate thing, I think. Do I like horror movies? I do, I love thrillers. Horror movies with less gore, I love, but I do love the thrill of being scared, and I do get really scared with horror movies. I think they're, they're a lot of fun. Absolutely love being scared. I love horror films. Um, I used to watch them all when I was growing up, and I sort of have that, that need to be scared as well. I love being scared, I absolutely, I love it. I absolutely love horror movies. Um, 
to be honest, I, 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 love, I love all films. I love every genre and I watch all types of things and a lot of TV shows. Um, but yeah, I love horror, absolutely. I would say it's one of the friendliest film sets that I, that I have been on. And I, I don't know whether that is a reflection of it being an independent film, but I, I, I would like to think so. I mean, working in independent films is entirely different. I mean, you, you are working with, with people that are there because they want, they want to do that work. They're not there because they've been employed to do that work. And I think that's, that's what makes the difference. And also when you haven't got you know, millions of dollars floating around, it means people have to be creative, truly creative. And I think it brings out the best in everyone. So it's been, it's been fun. Have you done two and four? Not yet. But we've got guests arriving for the weekend. I was just about to go out. But you can't go out. I need you here. I just really need a break. That's it! Leave! Just leave your father! Only 15 people have ever been diagnosed with it. There are only two people who are living with it now. And your mother is one of them. This diagnosis has been so hard for me. And I know it's been hard for you. You're not ready to let go of your mum yet. Maybe the memories you have of her in this house are keeping her alive. I'm scared. I'm confused. And I'm, I'm missing moments of time. You're grieving and you're not crazy. Like my mum. Night terrors are generally accompanied by a sense of something evil in the room. Now, if this was simply a result of people dreaming while their body was half awake, why are all the sufferers reporting exactly the same experiences? bringing a spiritualist tomorrow. Not a bereavement counsellor. Ah, I saw something I did! We're here to support Laura, who's been suffering from sleep paralysis. This is not worshipping the devil! You heard what that witch said about the occult, about opening yourself up to demons. She is mental. And he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons. And so was the Son of God made manifest. Please do not rejoice! Please do not rejoice! Yeah!